The Bank of England have increased their interest rates for the fifth consecutive time in a row. The government is now telling us inflation will probably be at 11% before the year's out and the government has also just published its white paper on rental reforms. The question is, how is this going to impact us as property investors and developers? Hey, if you're watching my videos for the first time, my name is Saj Hussain and on this channel I share with you my 15 plus years of property investing experience to ultimately help you get further faster in your own property investing journey. The Bank of England have just increased their interest rates and now currently stands at 1.25%. These recent increases have been quite small and maybe many people haven't really started to notice them yet. Those that have variable mortgages will have started receiving letters from their lenders telling them they're increasing slow or small amounts. But these small amounts may not feel very much. A lot of this is just in the early stages of what is about to come. The purpose of increasing the interest rates is for the ordinary individuals living in this country to have less money in their pocket to be able to spend. The biggest expense most people have when they receive their salaries, their mortgage or their rent payments. And if that's higher, then it means they have less money in their pocket to spend. And the main reason this is being done is so ultimately it can bring down inflation because inflation is now starting to spiral out of control. That's the cost of things, how much more expensive they are becoming. The recent announcement from the government is that inflation rates will probably be running about 11% before the end of the year. You will have already noticed that you'll have less money in your pocket because of things that you spend money on, for example, filling up your car with fuel, paying your gas and electricity bills, your grocery bills, all these things are now much higher than they were, say, a year or two years ago. And it certainly feels like it's much more expensive than 11%. In fact, to fill up the car, it's probably twice what it was, maybe about four or five years ago even. By the Bank of England increasing their interest rates, what it means is we have less money in our pocket. That ultimately means we're spending less money and that would help slow down inflation. However, the use of interest rates to control inflation is no longer as effective as it used to be. In the early 90s, I'd left university and started my work career, or in my case, at self-employment. And that was the height of a recession at that time. In fact, interest rates at that point were 15%. And inflation was very similar to what it is right now. So that's a tool they were using to try and control inflation and bring it back under control and that was the highest it had been at that particular time. But that was also the height of a recession. Now through my business career I've been through two recessions, the last one being 2008 plus the one in the early 90s. The reality is it is not a nice time for anybody. Yes the market evolves, different opportunities exist in that time but everybody collectively suffers when the country is in recession, inflation rate is sky high and interest rates also start to rise. If the Bank of England were to increase the interest rate to 15% right now like they did in the early 90s to control inflation, it would absolutely cripple the economy. It would also mean most people's mortgage payments would probably jump by three to maybe seven times what they currently are. Who's in a position to pay seven times what they currently are for their mortgage? Very, very few people. So there's a fine balance between increasing interest rates and trying to manage inflation without creating a massive recession at the same time. It's also important to recognize as property investors, inflation can be our friend. We can really benefit from inflation because it pushes prices up over time. So that means if you've got property now and inflation is rampant, in 10, 15 years time, those properties could be worth significantly more than they are today. In fact, I have a video on how you can use inflation to your advantage. We'll link that just up here for you, for you to watch afterwards. So how is all of this going to impact house prices? Are house prices going to fall? Is it going to be a collapse in the property market? Well, it certainly doesn't look like it's going to happen that way right now. There's still a massive shortage of stock in the marketplace in terms of properties available to let, properties available to purchase as well. As demand is quite high, it's keeping these prices really pushed up high. In our letting agencies, we are seeing properties being let very, very quickly at much higher rents than we've ever seen before. When it comes to sales of property, the market is still fairly buoyant and it's still quite hot, although there's signs of it easing a little bit, but I'm not sure how much of that really translates. So I'll give you an example. There's a property that we've renovated to sell. We've just put it on the market. I'll do a separate video on that soon. Now that property, over two viewings, I've had in excess of 100 people view that property and the offers were just come flowing in over 30 offers on the first day. What that shows us is there's still a massive shortage in the amount of stock and there's still a huge hunger to buy property. However, prices are not rising as quick as they were last year and over the last six months, they're starting to ease a little bit. And my belief is what will happen is the market will start to slow a little bit but it's unlikely we're gonna see a massive drop. If anything, we'll probably see prices maybe fall a little bit, maybe next year, it'll just ease off, there won't be any massive change. However, there are a number of other things also going on in the property market that we really need to be thinking about and how it's gonna impact us that very few people are actually talking about. 
So the government's in its new levelling up agenda, has got a new housing minister, and they're doing a number of things to change the private renting sector. In fact, just a few days ago, they released their new white paper, the Fairer Private Rented Sector White Paper. This is related to some of the things that were released in the Queen's speech about how they want to change the housing sector. Now, I'm all for change and improving and making it better for everybody involved. However, a lot of the changes that are being made are not really fair for everybody being involved. They're becoming much, much more advantageous for the tenant and starting to put much, much more pressure on the landlord and putting them in a much more weaker position. So let me give you an example. The white paper talks about creating a more safer, secure and comfortable environment for tenants. And I'm a big fan of that and I think that's important. A lot of our accommodation is very high quality and we do our best to make sure that we're on top of it, we have our own maintenance teams. And I know there's a small sector within the landlord community that really don't do a very good job and don't look after their properties and some are very unprofessional and really deserve to be pushed out of the market. I get that. However, we get good and bad apples in all businesses. There are a number of changes that government's been announcing that are going to affect the housing sector. For instance, one of the things I've been talking about is those properties are owned by housing associations, the tenants will have a right to buy them just like they do with council properties. Now, again, I, I like the principle. I think that's great. It means it allows people to own their home in a staged way that they maybe might not be able to. But actually, these organizations are independent charities. They're organizations set up for a purpose. They own those assets. Those assets are not owned by the government. So what's the government going to do? How is it going to take those properties off them and force them to be able to sell them to their tenants? And if they're doing that, are some organizations going to think, actually, is there any point in us doing this if they're not allowed to build out those assets in that way? There's been talk of some time with Section 21 being abolished. Section 21 being a document that we use to get a property back, which is called a no fault. And now we use a no fault to be able to get a property back often because it's the easiest way to get the property back as opposed to it being the ideal way to do it. Now, if they get rid of that document, then there needs to be more changes to the Section 8, which is the much more slower way, which has to have a reason in terms of why a landlord wants a property back. And generally speaking, I mean, my experience of doing this for 15 plus years and knowing many, many other people that are doing this for considerably longer, the only time a landlord wants a property back is they're moving into it and they're selling it, which are uh, quite rare for that to happen and which again will be accommodated for. In my experience, the landlord, when they want the property back primarily, it's because the tenant has not been keeping their part of the bargain. There's either antisocial behavior, there's damage to the property, there's rent arrears. There's these kind of challenging issues and the process for a landlord to be able to get that property back is very slow and laborious and can be very painful. And I've done other videos before and I've given examples of where sometimes it's been exceptionally expensive to try and get that property back. Now, slowly over time, what's happening is those landlords rights to be able to do that have been eroded more and more. For example, one of the things in the white paper is for a tenant to be able to claim rent back for non-decent homes. Now, when you look at non-decent homes, sometimes, you know, we've still got to see the detail of how this is going to work, but you can straight away see how it can be open to abuse. And many of the poor quality homes I've seen as well are actually owned by the council. So there may be the government may to look a little bit more closer to home rather than going and beating its stick on the landlords that, you know, really spend their time, effort, money. They take the risk to buy these properties to create a pension for their future and to create homes for other people. Now, as it's making it more and more difficult for landlords by, as I said, slowly eroding away really their security, you've also got to think about are lenders going to be comfortable providing the mortgages and is it going to create a situation where there'll be a mass exodus from smaller landlords from the buy to let sector. Now, if that happens, maybe that's the government's intention. Maybe they want these big, massive organizations to take over the rental sector, but they're building these huge apartments, a thousand apartments in one building or whatever it might be. They're not interested in housing and the rental stock a bit. That's traditionally, it's been landlords that have done that. And if the government pushed those people out of the picture, then who's going to take that place? There's already 300,000 houses that we need each and every year. And the government tells us we're not able to keep up those numbers. We've not met that target once. And the government is certainly not stepping up to build those houses. They're relying on the private rental sector. They're relying on independent builders to developers to build those houses, landlords to buy them, provide them with accommodation. But actually, if you make the whole leveling up agenda uh, as leveling down for those uh, people in that sector, why are they going to stay? It makes no commercial sense. They're going to move out of the sector. Now, if you've been following my content for any period of time, you know that I'm a big fan of being able to evolve. As the market evolves, the property market changes, we evolve, we change what we're doing as well. So this period of evolution is not gonna be that different to any other periods of evolution that happened in the property sector. However, as the market evolves and we are going through this period of evolution, 
and change, what it's important to do is be aware of which things are now beneficial, which things are profitable, which are the strategies that we should be looking at and learning, and which are the ones that are going to be dead in the water. So it's really important you keep educated. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure you click on my face over here to subscribe to the channel, and then watch this video over here about my views of what's happening to buy to let in 2022.